So for the past four months, we've been continuously monitoring the weather at the Phoenix site. So this has included uh, standard meteorological measurements of temperature, pressure, and wind. We've been uh, taking images of the atmosphere. We've been coordinating these measurements with uh, observations from orbit as, as much as possible. And we also have an experimental instrument called a LIDAR, which has provided a view of the atmosphere that has never been seen before. And uh, I'll start with uh, just the temperature uh, measured over the mission. So the, uh, the graph on the screen is showing the minimum daily temperature from Sol 0 landing day up until about Sol 120. And uh, you can see that for the first two months of the mission, the temperature was increasing. The summer solstice was at uh, about Sol 30. And then the temperature started to decrease. And now while the temperature is decreasing, we have uh, observed water uh, condensing in the atmosphere. So over the first two months of the mission, uh, the humidity of the atmosphere was increasing as water sublimated from the, uh, from the ground in the polar ice cap. And over the second half of the mission, we started to see frost, ground fog, and clouds. And this, occurred, this is now occurring every night. Okay, so the, uh, the next screen shows uh, images of, the, uh, of clouds drifting past the horizon. If we could see the next, uh, next screen, please. Okay, so this is, uh, 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 this is the view out over the horizon just about every morning now. So this, this is in the early hours of the morning, and we see that there are clouds drifting by on the horizon. So this is where the LIDAR comes in. So the LIDAR is able to, to probe the inner structure of the clouds. So the LIDAR instrument emits pulses of light upward into the atmosphere and detects what is scattered back. Now this image shows, first of all, on the right, a, a graphical depiction of, of, of the LIDAR, the laser beam pointed upward from the lander. So at the heart of the LIDAR is a, is a laser. It emits pulses of light 100 times per second. And if you were standing beside the lander looking upward, you would see a continuous green beam. And, and that is what uh, we're seeing on the, on the left side of this image. Those are pic that's a picture taken with the SSI camera. And uh, it's actually been, we can go back again. Sorry, okay, so, so, so that green beam uh, is, is a series of images from the SSI camera. And you can see bright spots in the beam, which are actually ice crystals, uh, laser light reflecting from ice crystals. And at the top of the beam, it's brighter because it's reflecting from a cloud, which is a few miles above the surface there. Okay, so in the next image shows uh, uh, a record of the LIDAR measurements over uh, a one-hour period. So this shows the amount of light which was scattered back uh, as a function of time. So time is increasing from left to right. And the colored area is the outline of a cloud. So this is the, the strength of the LIDAR. It's able to show us the structure within the cloud. So we're kind of looking at the anatomy of the cloud. And uh, you can really see uh, what the LIDAR brings out on the right side of this figure where the arrow is pointing at fall streaks. So the cloud is composed of ice crystals, and some of those ice crystals are large enough to fall through the atmosphere. And as they're falling through the atmosphere, the wind is changing speed. There's a shear, so it's a different speed at different heights. And these streaks, or fall streaks, get sheared out into the horizontal. So you can see here that the, uh, the ice crystals are, would be starting out at a height of about four kilometers. And by the end of the measurement, in this case, they've fallen all the way down to two and a half kilometers. And since when we're, while we're taking measurements on Mars, we don't know what's happening. If we had a choice here, we would have continued measuring for another hour. But, uh, so, so I would have expected that the ice crystals would have fallen even uh, closer to the surface in this case. So, so that is snow falling from the clouds. And, uh, and we're going to be watching very closely over the next month for evidence that the snow is actually landing on the surface. And this is a very important factor in the hydrological cycle on Mars with the, the exchange of water between the surface and the atmosphere.